Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode three of Friendly Feedback. My name's Kaz, and today's topic is brought to you by my friend and raid lead, G. You might recognize his name from the Fishing and Talking with G series. That's his brainchild, and I'll put a link to his channel below. I encourage you to go check him out, as he's a smart Warcraft player who also puts content out there, and uh, definitely go give him your support if you can. Um, speaking of the topic, today's topic is going to be World Quests. Uh, in standard friendly feedback fashion, we're going to start out by defining what world quests are, taking a deep look into what's wrong with them, and then looking to provide some friendly feedback, hence the name, uh, on ways to improve the system. Now, if this kind of stuff sounds interesting to you, I'd like to encourage you to go ahead and subscribe to my channel so as more of my videos come out, you're made aware and you can check them out. Um, if you like this particular video, I'd like to encourage you to like it, and if there's anything you're looking to, to see, hear, things like this, recommendations, feel free to leave a comment below, and I'd be happy to make some videos um, about the topics you're interested in. So let's go ahead and dive right in. World quests, what are they? Well, simply put, world quests are end game quests that don't require you to pick anything up or turn anything in. They're pseudo mini events that exist on the map where you simply go to the location, you'll kind of proc the event, and then it'll give you some sort of an objective to complete, and once it's completed, you'll receive your reward. Now, these events range from anything from uh, elite kill quests that can require numerous people, to small puzzles, pet battles, um, or gathering. They reward things like Azerite power, war resources, gold. They all give reputation in some kind, but sometimes give extra rep. They can give gear, and they can give profession stuff in the form of either crafting mats, uh, recipes, higher ranks, things of that nature. They exist for a limited period of time. Um, sometimes they'll exist for the entire duration of like a warfront cycle. Sometimes they're like three-day elite quests. They can be 24 hours often, 12 hours, or uh, even shorter. They uh, exist in the Legion and Battle for Azeroth zones only, as those are the two expansions that feature them. And they've been expanded into our redesigned Warfront zones for participation there. World quests have also been used on occasion for micro-holidays. For instance, the uh, AQ-40 Remembrance Day, where you would go out into Silithus and you would collect uh, various items and things of that nature. World quests were the vessel by which a lot of that stuff was accomplished. What do they do, is the next logical question. Well, simply... Uh, Put, as we kind of stated before, based on the rewards, they're a great source of rep. In fact, they're kind of the source of rep in a lot of situations for our endgame factions. They uh, also contribute to the Emissary Quests, which was uh, an addition in Legion. And what that effectively is, is you complete four or sometimes three of these world quests for a given faction, and it will complete an Emissary. Now, those Emissaries will give you a variety of kind of enhanced rewards, whether it be um, additional war resources, a higher level piece of gear, a significant chunk of AP, larger gold rewards, and then they always give you additional rep. I think it's 1500 rep for the emissary by default. Now, this is kind of an end game progression system that exists uh, in terms of pushing paragons, uh, reputation, and some other things. And the world quests are also linked to some of the meta achievements. Um, in the case of Najatar and Mechagon, there are certain world quests that need to be accomplished either a certain way or a certain number of times or accomplished uh, with all the, the variety or various rather varieties to complete these meta achievements. So they're basically kind of the end game vessel to get gold rep, AP, catch up gear, things of that nature into the hands of the player. Now that we've kind of defined them, though, what we need to start doing is getting into the, the root cause of what's wrong with them. And to do that, this situation is going to require a bit of a journey. Because understanding the problems that exist with World Quest is more than just saying that World Quests aren't particularly fun. Because some of them are, but that's not necessarily the problem. And I think what we need to do is get a deeper understanding of simply how players have, throughout the history of Warcraft, spent their time at max level outside of raids. Because that really is the root of the issue, in my particular opinion. So we're going to start chronologically, and we're going to make our way through. With Classic fresh in our mind, seeing that it's only uh, 10 days out from release, uh, we uh, kind of look back on what Vanilla provided in terms of endgame content. Now, Classic obviously has a much more lengthy leveling process, taking upwards of a month or more simply to reach max level instead of one night kind of uh, all-nighter to push yourself to the max level. Endgame in Classic was spent doing a lot of things uh, beyond just getting to 60. There were significant attunements in the case of like 
getting your keys for Upper Black Rock Spire, attunements for for various raids or dungeons, best in slot, pre bis farms, things of that nature. Farming consumables was more time consuming because you didn't have flying available to you. The world was bigger, things moved slower. Grinding PvP ranks as there was an arena. Um, BGs took up significant portions of your time as some of your really good gear was in there and people were looking for that rank 14 grind. There were rep grinds that existed in the case of things like the Cenarian Circle, the Argent Dawn, uh, but those were performed differently and took different amounts of time and those again had different rewards. Uh, very few people, if you look back at vanilla, ever quote-unquote beat the game, i.e. clearing Nax. Uh, so raiding was a more time-consuming part of the the average player base and simply put we just weren't as good of players when vanilla was out so raiding itself took up quite a bit more time uh, between bad internet organizing 40 people etc etc the game simply played different although i think with when we see the release of classic even though the communities have changed the interactions have changed with things like discord more active forums, better internet connection, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and the existence of private service for so long, I still think you're going to see a lot of endgame time in the re-release of Classic being spent on, like, world PvP, community-run events, for instance, dual tournaments, speed runs, speed clears, things of that nature, and then you'll actually see the existence of more alts, I believe, in Classic than you ever did in Vanilla. But at, at that time, there wasn't really a need for World Quest or anything like that because there was a lot to do in-game, um, and people played a little bit less back then as well. Now, as we moved into the Burning Crusade, there were still more attunements, the Black Temple attunement being one of the ones that stands out in my brain. Heroic dungeon grind started to be a thing as you were trying to rank up and get your, your unlocks and your keys for the various dungeons. That was the introduction of the daily quest, which eventually, I would argue, has transformed and evolved into a form of world quest, um, with the rep grinds from both the Rays and the Nether Drakes being both lengthy in duration, but also somewhat prestigious as they were new model flying mounts that people were very interested in. You added the Shattered Sun Offensive, uh, with the addition of a lot of daily quest hubs there, which rewarded lots of different recipes for endgame progression in terms of professions and things of that nature. Burning Crusade also provided the introduction of Arena, so there was now more PvP to be had um, in Burning Crusade than there had been in Classic. And again, Rating at that time was still fixed in terms of its difficulty, was much more lengthy, I would say, in most situations, um, for the average player base at least, in terms of the amount of time committed to actually see content. Now as we moved into Wrath of the Lich King, we saw the introduction of Wintergrasp, which was the open world PvP that also provided a raid uh, entrance to the winner. You had the Argent Tournament, which was an extensive amount of daily quests that went beyond simple rep grinds for amount, uh, but allowed you catch up mechanics for other factions' um, reputations. For instance, if you were undead and you hadn't actually spent time with Orgrimmar or Thunderbluff, you could make yourself a champion of those particular factions and gain other horde reputations. You had some of the daily quest hubs in Sholazar where you had to choose between uh, the two different factions and there were different rewards associated with there. Also in raiding, we saw the introduction of hard mode in Old Deer, or Olduar, excuse me. Uh, and we also saw the introduction of heroic raiding in ICC, seeing multiple difficulties of a similar raid. So not only were people hard-pressed to kill the Lich King, but now you had additional levels or layers of progression in terms of trying to push your guild, so that took up additional time. Uh, Wrath of the Lich King was also the introduction of achievements, so now there were other things to go out there for all the uh, collectors to go out and do, things that you hadn't been doing before to grind out a bunch of stuff, and so there was lots of time consuming things if you were looking for something to do. As we moved into Cataclysm, we saw Tol Barad, which was the continuation of the idea of Wintergrasp, was, and it was expanded upon in that you had world quests that could be done in Tol Barad, but then if you won the battle and controlled the zone, you unlocked additional world quests, which would allow you to grind the rep for the faction, purchase or uh, collect items that you could then use to purchase um, cosmetics, trinkets, things of that nature. Kata showed us the Firelands, which was a fun uh, daily quest zone that had reasonable progression as you leveled up in terms of your reputation, working your way into the portal there, pushing your way into the Firelands and having an impact as you were to grow and progress your character. We saw the introduction of guild levels, so guilds were grinding stuff as well as just individual player progression endgame. LFR came about in Cataclysm. For better or for worse, it was simply another thing you could do with your time to potentially get some gear or uh, see some different stuff and work on cosmetics. 
There was the world rework that came with Kata. In the wake of Deathwing, a lot of the starting zones were redone, so a lot of people found themselves wanting to play alts, as it was much more accessible in Cataclysm than it had ever been, and there was new questing to be done, so people were going out and seeking the new story zones as they wanted to expand their knowledge of Warcraft lore. Mr. Pandaria added a lot of dailies. Various factions had dailies spread all over the continent. You had the Isle of Thunder, which was a great progression there as we invaded the island, pushed in, and took care of the raid there. You had the Timeless Isles, which many people remember quite fondly, being kind of an infinite bastion of um, a handful of raid bosses, rep grinds, rares um, that had toys and mounts and things associated with it. And then we started to move our way into the Dark Ages, Warlords of Draenor, where the garrison came to be your endgame. You would sit lonely, by yourself, phased from the world, clicking on your mind day after day. You had mission tables, where you could send NPCs out that you never saw to do missions that you weren't a part of and got some rewards for doing it. Blizzard obviously saw the issues with Warlords, as we saw significant changes, even with the introduction of Hellfire, giving us more of the uh, rares and things of that nature, flying coming back in um, with the late game change in terms of their approach to that with the Pathfinder stuff. And uh, we saw a hard pivot as we went into Legion. Now, Legion is where we stepped away. There weren't a whole lot of dailies in, in the garrison. Um, there were your little command tables where you chose kind of what you did, but that was kind of the extent. Legion, we basically did away with dailies altogether and world quests came to be a thing. Uh, it was fun. I would say, in a lot of respects, as uh, it provided a new way to get around the world and do different things. AP became a thing as we got our Azur or artifact weapons, excuse me. And so grinding AP regularly to try to progress early in the expansion to push your weapon to unlock all the stuffs and or to catch up your other specs later on. We had the legendary grind as you would turn in any given emissary and there was a chance at a legendary. Um, and everybody wanted those legendaries because they were powerful and they did things and they were fun. We had Mage Tower endgame. So if you had a, n a handful of alts or if you were looking to experiment with specs you don't normally play, there was a significant personal challenge that was quite time consuming if you did it early in the expansion and still could be difficult late game if you're trying to push that, that particular um, challenge and push your own player skill. We had Mythic Plus being introduced in Legion, so dungeons had more replayability than ever before. It was a great way to, die, to grind AP. It got you back in. It got you progressing. It got you gear. It got you doing stuff, in addition to all the other things. Which now brings us into BFA, where we find ourselves yet again doing world quests as we progress through it. We have raiding. We have PvP. We have all the normal stuff. So what's the issue? It seems like a logical progression as we go through. Things have adapted as the game has changed, and players have different demands now than they did before. Well... As we kind of look at it, here's the way that I see, because to be perfectly frank, when this topic was brought up to me by G, I was like, okay, yeah, well, I don't love world quests. It's kind of a daily chore, but there's not really anything wrong with them. But then I kind of got to thinking about it. When I say it's a daily chore and I'm doing it because I have to, not because I want to, well, that simply means that there's something wrong with it, right? So let's kind of dig in and see why they aren't particularly fun, why players refer to them as your WoW chores. Why is it something that you log in feeling like you need to do it as opposed to you want to do it? Well, rep grinds have changed, um, and like we said before, the world quests largely have replaced the way that we did rep grinding. Now, I'm not saying that choosing you know, a handful of mobs um, to grind out your booty bay reputation by just grinding thousands of pirates for four rep apiece is a better rep grind. That's that's not what we're getting at. Um, but rep grinds have changed in the sense that before, if there was a particular reputation that you were looking to push, there was a defined way to get it. You would push through it. And then once you reached Exalted, you were effectively done. Uh, the expansion of that would be things like Tol Barad, where Exalted wasn't necessarily the end, as there was currency that you needed to unlock um, to purchase certain cosmetic items and things of that nature if you wanted to, to kind of progress pr progress the, the rep grind there in that respect. Uh, but largely, there were tangible goals in sight with a defined end in whatever that grind was. I would also say that Early on, reputations were a little bit more scarce in terms of what you cared about, and the rewards for gaining the reputation were more significant or meaningful. Uh, when we're talking about classics, some of those rep grinds in the case of like um, the Argent Crusade and Scenarian Circle is to get particular items that are useful or needed for raiding. 
whether it be, you know, resist gear or certain uh, recipes or things of that nature, there was an end game there. I want this to, to acquire this to, you know, progress my rating in X, Y, or Z location. Legion, we kind of took a change, right? So like it had been that way basically up until Legion. And then Legion was the introduction of the Paragon, right? So you get to Exalted and then after once or once you were Exalted, every 10,000 additional rep above and beyond Exalted, you would receive a Paragon chest. And those Paragon chests gave you certain rewards. It had chances for mounts in the case of a lot of the Legion reputations. It gave you a big chunk of uh, AP. It gave you a bunch of gold. It gave you some war resources or whatnot. And that's continued on into um, Battle for Azeroth. But I'd say the big difference is when we look at Legion, whether it be through Emissary quests or through the Paragon quests or chests, every single one of those chests that you opened had a chance at a Legendary. And you could say, but Kaz... There is a defined endgame. You could get every single legendary for your class, which I did. I had every Warlock legendary, barring on the Thule's Vision, which is a completely separate thing. But what Blizzard did that I think was very smart was they said, hey, if you reach all, if you get all of the legendaries for your spec, then you start getting legendaries for other specs. Once you get all the legendaries for your class, you start getting legendaries for other classes. And so for me, somebody that plays alts, that spends time trying to expand the game and experience as much as I can, I could be pushing uh, emissary quests via world quests and getting legendaries for my priest, for my DK, for my mage. And that felt rewarding and it felt exciting every time you opened up a chest because there was a chance of something good in there. And when it happened, it felt great because now my alts are more powerful, which gives me a better option to bring them to an alt raid. Uh, makes pushing them through LFR or a normal pug easier. Makes world questing easier. But as we get into BFA, we find ourselves asking, well, what's the value, right? Because when I do an emissary quest, I'm getting one of a handful of things, right? We said gear. Well, the gear seems to be capped for emissaries at 415. I'm sitting at item level for almost 40. So nothing in there is particularly useful unless it massively tightened forges. Gold, 2,000 gold for an emissary quest. Not particularly rewarding. I'll do it, but it's not exciting because I have 1.5 million gold. So 2,000 is not huge. War resources. I have 70,000 war resources. I couldn't care less about war resources. AP. Well, AP is a whole nother can of worms. And I don't think that AP is a great system as it exists, but that was really the only reason I was doing it. And that's where we find ourselves in this semi chore mode where I was doing world quests, especially ones that rewarded AP to a get the AP B push the emissary quests, which also rewarded AP and then C to get my paragon through all the rep I was gaining to get more AP. So this endless sink of AP to try to gain power simply by this well of your neck is the reason that I do world quests. Now, luckily, today, the day of recording, I hit neck level 65, which means I've unlocked my third essence, and now I don't care about AP. I'm going to do it slowly. I'm going to do it progressively. But the fact was, they were basically holding me hostage by saying, here is a significant increase to your DPS. Grind your face off to get it. And I did. But it wasn't fun. And it didn't feel rewarding because it felt like when I got it, it wasn't a huge accomplishment. It was just, hey, I finished the list of chores that Big Dad Blizzard left for me. So I think that's one of the major issues that exists with world quests. One of the other things that we have to kind of look at is the use of world quests in terms of player time commitment, right? Because we talked about before, and that was the whole point of going through kind of the history of WoW, is how do players use your endgame time, right? Because we've always had rating. We've always had rating since the beginning. So if we're talking classic, you're preparing for Molten Core, you're doing BWL, you're doing AQ, you're doing ZG, you're pushing into Nax. So you've got your defined raid times, but outside of raid times, you need to be doing something else. Same thing can be said for BC, as you, you're going into Old War, you're going into, uh, not Old War, God, that's uh, Wrath. Um, but as you're going into Tempest Keep, you're going into Karazhan, you're going into SSC, you're going into Black Temple, um, going into Wrath, yeah, like we said, Old War, we've got ICC, we've got TOGC. Um, so you, you've always had raids, and so saying, well, yeah, but there's raiding, that's your endgame. Well, there's always been raiding. 
So it's the what do you do outside of raiding question that comes to mind. And so we talked about how the introduction of Arena in BC and how we've added in Mythic Pluses and Legion and stuff like that. And so, yes, those systems exist. Those things exist in game. Those are things you can spend time on. But I think that is the other underlying problem with World Quest is that the other stuff you can do isn't super fulfilling or rewarding in a way that is meaningful, right? So if we go in there and I'm doing a ton of Mythic Pluses, I may be having fun or I may be not. I, I personally don't think the Mythic Plus balance is in a great place right now, but that's a whole nother video if we want to get into it. But doing tons and tons and tons of Mythic Pluses, yeah, it'll get you some gear, which is great, I guess, in, in that it, you know it helps gear you up, but it does kind of replace rating. But the problem is, is if you're looking for that AP sync, like, it's just not there anymore. AP was quite lucrative from Mythic Pluses and Legion, but it's not anymore. So, like, you don't find people pushing Mythic Pluses for AP. So, a lot of times, people do their one and done. I get my 10 done, and I'm happy because now I'm getting my Residuum so I can buy my Azerite gear, which is go to friendly feedback number one and see the issues with that. But, like, you're also getting your big chunk of AP. Same thing can be said for PvP. PvP is not particularly fun right now. You talk to a lot of the high-end pros and stuff, you listen to their streams, and they talk about how they don't really want to queue because it's not enjoyable. And above and beyond that, the system's not very well balanced, and there's not a PvP vendor. So, again, you probably do what you need to do to max out your conquest bar so that you get your weekly chest, and then you move on. Um, but the, kind of the stop fill is these world quests. I, I suppose we've got islands existing here in BFA. And that was meant to be the big AP sync. But outside of doing your world quest for islands, which is completing three mythics, four heroics, and five normals, question mark, um, any of those combinations or whatever to, to fill up your bar for the week, it doesn't become particularly time effective to go into islands. And I don't know anybody, like, there, maybe there's the one guy that pushes his neck that, like, I know has done thousands of islands, but, like, nobody in my guild is like, fuck yeah, islands, I can't wait to go. Everybody's just like, hey, who wants to just knock out their islands really quick and get them done? So, like, islands fall under the same issue as World Quest, where it's a chore, it's a means to an end, and yes, those exist in the game, yes, that's a part of life, but when World Quests are such a big part of it, um, through the emissaries, through the rep progression, you know, because you're not getting rep other than uh, honor bound rep if you're Horde or whatever, 7th Legion, I think it is, for the Alliance from Islands. Like, if you need to get other rep, you're forced to do world quests. So, again, it's just not fun, and there are no viable alternatives. If, if this was a means to it, but there were other useful ways to do it, then I think it'd be a little bit less of an argument. The other issue I have with world quests is lack of variety. How many times have you done the same world quest over and over and over and over? Like, there are some fun world quests, I'll admit. There's some out there that are, you know, relatively enjoyable. Um, but I find myself usually targeting for an emissary quest the one, like, mob kill quest. Kill the named mob. Um, and that's because it's efficient, not because, because nothing out there is particularly fun. And a lot of them are pretty heavy time sinks. Uh, so... The, the variety in terms of the world quests and the design of the individual world quests, I think, is pretty significantly lacking. Now, as we're talking about world quests, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Najatar and Mechagon, because this was the big 8.2 change, right? We've got these two new zones, and they talked about how they were going to change it up. Mechagon was going to be more of a sandboxy kind of explorative zone and Najatar was going to be much more of your traditional end game level like a progression zone or whatever so they both rely on world quest to an extent Najatar I would say more heavily than Mechagon um, but interestingly enough both Najatar and Mechagon heavily rely on daily quests coming back uh, why that is I don't know my guess would be something to do with the psychology of seeing a whole bunch of question marks that are yellow on your map and going, hey, I'm going to go and turn in a bunch of stuff because I can now see the product of my rewards instead of it just popping up in your bag or whatever and never seeing it. It fills up your quest log, which is the plus and minus of things, but I don't, I don't know that that really changes anything because you're effectively accomplishing the same thing because the rewards for those are mana pearls, which is a currency, AP, or war resources for the most part. But... I would say that Najatar and Mechagon are definitely a step in the right direction in terms of endgame content. Najatar and Mechagon both have extensive, uh, what do you call them, meta achievements. 
that exist between the Mecha Dun and like the Under the Sea or something, whatever the hell they call it for Najatar, that have a lot of stuff that involves you killing all the rares, finding little like cat figurines in Najatar, um, you know, filling out your your blueprint thing in Mechagon. Like there's a lot of stuff to be done there. So it's a time sink that is not required unless you're looking for the titles and or mounts. But if you are somebody that's looking to invest a lot of time, you are a collector, you are an achievement hunter, there's a lot to be done there. And I think that's really good. And like we said, with friendly feedback, the whole goal here is not to just dump on Blizzard all day long, but to just discuss the, com- the, the, the topic, talk about what's been done right and what's been done wrong. And I think Nagatar and Mechagon are certainly a step in the right direction. They've taken up a lot of time. They're coming to a close for me at this point, as I only need one blueprint and one song in Mechagon to complete the Mecha Dun achievement. And Najatar, I need to finish out my Aqua Team Murder Force, which is just leveling up your followers, which should be done, I think, in six days for me. And then doing the little, like, cave lab experiment thing, which I've got, I think, six weeks left on. That one, I would argue, they did a really bad job of pacing on, but besides the point. Um, but at the end of the day, I think Najatar and Mechagon certainly deserve an honorable mention in terms of Blizzard course correcting the idea of uh, world quests to an extent. Now, the issue is, is that I would say Mechagon is a little bit too RNG heavy in terms of the meta achievement, but it's an MMO and Blizzard has stated many times they love RNG, um, which we could make a friendly feedback. If you're interested in that, let me know in the comments below about them misunderstanding the concept of RNG, in my opinion. But um, the other the other issue I have is the longevity, right? So if you're an achievement hunter like me, and you've been going aggressively, you're starting to come to a close, right? I've gotten my Exalted a long time ago. I've run through a lot of Paragon chests. I'm starting to get all the rewards from the Paragon stuff. Like I said, I'm next 65. I'm basically kind of running out of stuff to do, where now World Quests are actually becoming optional, legitimately, which is great. But that should mean that we should have something else coming soon. And I would say that that is where the war campaign has been a giant failure, this expansion. Because from a storytelling perspective, world quests do almost nothing. Yeah, you have somebody pop in and talk to you occasionally. The blood trolls will learn that we will not hide from them any longer. Good work. But there's really not any lore being revealed. There's not any big game-changing stuff. There's certainly not any cinematics associated with it. World quests are simply just something you do and you move on. So meaningful, actual, interesting character progression doesn't exist there. And that's where I think we're lacking. So now we're already starting to transition. So let's start talking about fixes. Things that we could do to change the way the world quests function, or to change the game itself so that world quests fit in more effectively. And so what I would say, the first thing you need to do is not necessarily change anything about world quests, but fix the other stuff in the game. Like, for me, where I'm coming to the end of the meta achievements, I've got my AP grind effectively taken care of. Um, I feel pretty confident in my reputations and things of that nature. So at this point, I should be able to like, okay... I've gotten to a stable point in terms of character progression. So that means now I'm opening up a bunch more time to push Raider IO and Mythic Plus, push my arena rating to maybe, uh, you know, reach a higher ranking than I've ever gotten before, work on the transmog there, try to get better gear, try to get the mount, maybe push for a glad title. You know, maybe there are some other achievements that I'm looking to hunt for. But The state of the game as it exists, like we said, the PvP balance is pretty poor. It's been getting better, but I still don't think that it's where it needs to be, and I don't think the PvP system itself is rewarding in a significant enough way. Mythic Plus balance, like I said before, people watch the MDI, and so all they want to bring is three rogues, and that's because rogues are incredibly overpowered, and a lot of range classes suck. Plain and simple. Yes, everything is viable below a 15, but community perceptions and things of that nature are such that it's very difficult to get a good group together and actually push fun Mythic Pluses for a lot of classes um, because people perceive them as being worthless or not you know, being useful. And I would argue that in this particular season, Beguiling is not a particularly fun affix to deal with. It doesn't 
doesn't add anything fun in the way that Reaping did, where yes, it's a challenge, yes, it requires coordination, but it allows you to do crazy numbers and feel powerful. All it does is slow you down and be annoying and unpredictable, in my opinion. So I would fix the other parts of the game so that if I have been pushing, 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 pushing world quests, and now I'm like, finally, I can do something else, there's something else to do. Now, something else I would do personally, if you look at the maps at any given point in time, there are a lot of world quests at any given time. So what I would do is I would make less of them. I would make them potentially slightly more time consuming individually so that maybe it evens out. But by having less total world quests with better overall rewards and slightly higher time commitment per world quest, your investment is roughly the same. But you now have, if you have 100 world quests, right, you, you pay your designers or whatever to create 100 world quests. Instead of having 30 of them out on any given day so that every three days-ish I see the same quest over and over and over again, maybe you only have 10 of them out. Obviously not realistic, but like we're just using numbers. So if you paid for that 100, now you don't see it, the same world quest for 10 days. So it makes the feeling of variety a lot more impactful so things feel new it's that fresh meme but the reality is if i'm doing the same thing every day it gets boring it gets monotonous it gets tedious if i'm doing something different every day even if it has the same end result in terms of the resources game time commitment involved if i'm doing different stuff every day it feels better so that's something that i would consider what i would also do is i would start pushing world quests out into other zones like we said right now it basically exists in cold Tross and zandalar and then it exists in our Warfront zones of uh, Arathi Highlands and Darkshore. So, how cool would it be if you had world quests in Outland where you're being pulled into, like, through the portal or something like that? Like, somebody, a messenger shows up or whatever. I don't know if it's a messenger because then it sounds more like a daily quest, but like, you've got world quests in other zones, right? That have useful rewards that are somewhat lore based. So, maybe they're setting up for, um, like, like, in, it, in advance of this expansion, if you had put in any coastal zone, had world quests that were associated with Naga incursions, because Azjara is starting to rise up, right? And so now we've got, like, incursions in Ratchet, or you've got something going on on the coast of Darnassus before the tree burned, or something like that. Um, you had some Naga incursions taking place in uh, Zuna, or so I don't know. And, and, like, name a coastal zone, throw some sort of world quest that's associated with Nagas, now it's an event, right? Now I need to get out in the world and I need to start dealing with the stuff. So it's bringing me into old zones. It's bringing lifeblood into those zones. It's building on the lore so you can feel kind of the rising tension of the Naga. And then when 8.2 drops and we get sucked into Najatar, Ajara pulls all our Nagas home, all those world quests end, and now we start building into stuff. So now we do the raid, right? Maybe those are, they're batted down for a while. We've done the raid and now, spoiler alert, you have old god stuff, because guess what? By defeating Azara, it seems like we've set Nazoth free in some capacity. So now let's have some some cults popping up in the world. Let's have Goldshire. You, like, if you're Alliance, all of a sudden Goldshire, there's a cult that popped up that needs to be dealt with, and you need to go investigate something. You've got something popping up in, I don't know, Unguro. Like, they're gathering resources from the dinosaurs there. Um, to do some sort of like ritual or something. You got to go stop the cultists or some something like that. Um, those kinds of things would be really interesting to me because it would give you an opportunity to get out in the world. It would allow you to build immersion in terms of the storyline that's being done. And you could have world quest rewards. And if you don't do them, you don't do them. Like you, you make the rewards similar in scope where like, and, but you can tie them to either old emissary stuff like because you've got that hundred reputation achievement so maybe if it's in a zone that has an old reputation it's a way to get old rep or you make them repless or you just build a new re uh, faction or something like that that's like the um, incursion response team or something i don't know come up with something better than that but we're making it up on the fly here but make some sort of thing where you're going out into the world you're responding to these threats and you're building rep for that faction I think that'd be fun because it would get you back in the world and it would make the world feel bigger because you're visiting places you haven't been in forever and you're just using the tech that already exists, but maybe you like it's alternating through zones. Yes, it's going to require more work from Blizzard, but like for the amount of money that they make and the investment and the fact that we're paying a, a monthly sub on top of buying, like you cannot convince me that they can't afford to do something like this. So I would, I would do something like that. Um, I think that'd be a way to 
to spice up world quests in a new and inventive way without having to change the tech at all, just simply the way that it's being employed. Um, Paragons are another thing that I think would be addressed along with world quests because they tie in with both emissaries falling into the Paragons, so the infinite progression system is nice because then it means that if you do choose to continue to pursue those paths or whatever, that you're getting some tangible reward instead of just doing world quests and not getting the rewards or seeing the progression that other people are doing. But they present a problem where, especially with AP, it kind of falls into this, well, if you can get AP, you should get AP, therefore they're mandatory. So working on stuff like putting mounts in there the way that Legion did, I think was great, because if you're trying to grind out those mounts, you're doing a lot of Paragon stuff. But at the end of the day, if you don't get it, it doesn't gimp your ability to do anything. You're not hurting on DPS because you didn't get the uh, the Stormheim Drake or anything like that. You just simply don't have a mount in your collection. So I think more like toys, pets, mounts, stuff like that, putting in the Paragon for the people that want to put the work in as opposed to gigantic chunks of AP and gold, I think that's a healthier way to approach the Paragon so they don't feel mandatory, but they do feel rewarding should you choose to take the step to do them. And then I would say the next step would be expand your war campaign again, because we need more story. And that's where the war, like the putting the world quests along with the war campaign and doing stuff like the incursions, I think could be useful. Um, but also having more storyline quests that are spread throughout because I, I haven't seen Sylvanas in forever. I don't know what she's doing. Like she hasn't done anything significant other than we know that she's threatening to kill Bane. Like let's see that story some more. So I think Blizzard's storytelling is lagging. Um, and I would also say we need to see more stuff like Mecha with future patches. So 825, we're not going to get a new zone, but that doesn't mean we can't bring in a slew of new achievements or quests or zone or like uh, things in pre-existing zones. So I would like to see more meta achievements, more unique hidden stuff, um, you know, things that you can work on, like the re- like, I don't know, having the fishing stuff in Mechagon was great because it was a way to get reputation. There was a pain in the ass. It was a time sink. But if you're looking at min max, you could do it. And if you weren't, you could ignore it. But then there was an achievement tied to it that eventually leads to your little fishing globe. I don't know. Stuff like that's fun. Um, so I would try to expand a lot of that. I would try to build into a lot of that. I would try to incorporate a lot more of that kind of stuff. And I think you would find that players spending their... Um, their valuable time end game would feel a little bit less like they're just doing chores all the time as opposed to like, okay, I'm being immersed in the world because I'm now expanding upon stories that I've been hearing about through my personal gameplay. So I don't know. What do you think? Like, are my ideas completely off base? Would you like to get back out in the old world? Or do you think BC should just remain BC? We don't need to go back to outland because it makes it a little awkward going out there. Um, in the wake of, you know, defeating Illidan and then him becoming our friends. I, I'm, I'm not sure. It, it certainly raises some some potential retcon or weird issues or whatever with phasing and timelines and stuff of that nature. And then it could impair, like, especially if you're war mode on, leveling. Um, if you're bringing people into old leveling zones, then do people start ganking a bunch of people? Does it discourage leveling with war mode? I, I don't know. There's, there's certainly issues that could be addressed there. But, like, quite frankly, if you're war mode on leveling and you get ganked, you, like you're getting a huge XP boost, which I don't think you should be getting to begin with. So maybe just turn that shit off and level like everybody else. I don't know. And for like players that are max level, the world still exists. It's not like all of a sudden, you know, it's not like Lock Modan suddenly stopped existing because you leveled past level 20. Like it's still there. There's theoretically still people living there. Maybe the threats are a little smaller in scope because you were beating down whatever the, uh, the native monsters were, but um, that doesn't mean that stuff can't well up as the world matures and other people are growing in strength the same way we were. So I, I, I personally like the idea of getting back out into the world, but if, if you like it, you know, let me know in the comments. If you don't, let me know as well. I'd be interested um, to hear what your opinion is in, in regards to that kind of stuff. But at this point, I think that's um, kind of my take on World Quest. Like I said, I don't think, like, like I went into it kind of really trying to figure out what my thoughts were. And again, I didn't hate them, initially but the more i think about what they do i think they present a problem in the design philosophy of end game world of warcraft that could be relatively easily fixed so hopefully this was insightful hopefully this got you thinking about you know what your time and what your gameplay experience is, is means to you um, if you like this video again i'd like to encourage you to subscribe to my channel so you can get more videos like this expect more classic content coming soon with the release in just 10 days um, give this video a like if you find this interesting so that other people can help find it. And uh, like I said before, if you've got ideas for other friendly feedback topics, if you've got inputs on this particular topic, leave some comments below. 
I'd love to discuss with you um, your thoughts on the whole process. But thanks for watching to the end. Thanks for listening. Thanks for your opinions. Hope you're having a great day. And until next time, cheers.